special events application? Uh, there's only one tonight, so we didn't feel it was important to bring Leisha in, um, and this is a standard application. Okay. Item C, review of agenda items for the October 25th, 2017 <coughs> regular meeting. Resolution 2017-314 is a special event application. Resolution 2017-315 is the unclaimed credit on taxes. What this is is these individuals were told they had a credit on their taxes. We sent them two letters. The state law is one. They never came for the money, so now we're taking it. Um, 316 and 317 are two properties that no longer have sewer billing, so we're terminating those accounts. 318 and 319 are two pocket liquor licenses that the director um, from the state hasn't given us the okay to renew these yet. Um, my understanding is that once we get okay from the directors, these will be renewed. These are not businesses, these are just pocket licenses. Um, resolutions 320 and 321 is surplus property. Um, 321 is, is municipal vehicles, and 320 is, we have an, an inordinate amount of slate by a fisherman's lot that it's time to auction off. Um, what will happen as per the law, it gets auctioned off. Um, uh, we use the website govdeals.com. If no one purchases it, we are going to give this away to free for residents because we do get some uh, requests every now and then. Resolution 217-322 is approving the bills. 323 is something that I mentioned at the last meeting. It is entering into an agreement with the county to administer the city's community development block grant. Uh, the freeholders have passed the resolution um, from their side, agreeing that they, the, counts, the county will administer the operations of the CDBG program. What this means for the city is we still will do everything that we normally do. We advertise, we have public meetings, public hearings. The county will then review applications for completeness and they handle all the back end work. They handle all the processing for payments, um, all the site inspections, subsidiary agreements. They will handle all that work, work for us. Um, 324 is something that I mentioned at the last meeting. Previously, TNM had completed the design for the sanitary sewer line underneath the railroad tracks, which extends underneath Main Street. Um, they had finished the design. The DOT authorized the water company to do work, which technically, in my opinion, should have been done two years ago when they knew they were going to do Main Street. So TNM had finished the as built, and now we need to redo the as built. This has already been completed work, but this was done because of New Jersey Department of Transportation um, and their, in my opinion, poor management of the water line upgrades. Um, resolution 2017-325 is supporting an application for um, interfaith for existing needs housing in the city of Asbury Park for county home financing. Mm -hmm. This is similar <coughs> to the, the project that has already been approved for homeless um, boys. This is for homeless women. Right, right next door, proposed right next door to that property. Um, resolution 2017-326 is an extending agreement um, for Madison Marquette for the Fifth Avenue Pavilion. Their original agreement with the city was for one year with two six month options. Um, the agreement sh shall be granted if they're not in default. They're not in default. So is, this is a formality to authorize it. The one thing to remember is that the parking rate, because they're, all, they're paying us for the parking spaces they're using for staging, goes up 1.25%. And then resolution three, 27 is change orders with BlackRock Enterprises for the road program. This is approximately $44,000 of increased costs through 13 different change orders, many of which are zero out. Um, the quantities of the, the, the items zeroed out, for example, if they didn't need to put a new catch basin in it and they had more stone, those equaled out. Um, this is a formality on the zeros because those are field change orders. and. Um, we're recommending approval for that. Under ordinances, there's two for second reading. The scattered site redevelopment plan, which the city planner is here, if there's any questions on that, um, she can give a summary. And then ordinance 2017-39 is the salaries of certain employees. Um, as we discussed last meeting, this is to make uniformity for the construction building department. 
um, and in include part-time employees so we can hire part-time inspectors as needed um, within the department. And that concludes the agenda item. Any sure. questions? <coughs> Next. Okay, we're on to item D, matters from the city council. Jesse? Just want to remind everyone that there's going to be a trunk retreat here at Municipal Power, uh, Municipal Building, um, Thanksgiving evening, starting at 4 to 6.30. If you still like to donate candy or donate your car, you still can do it. Thank you. That's it. Uh, so two quick things. I wanted to thank the city staff, particularly Michelle Alonzo, for the better block. It was, uh, we sectioned off a part of Springwood Ave and had artists and music and environmental stuff. And even, uh, I know initially it, it was drizzly, but it ended up turning out to be a really great event and currently has a mural on the, on the street there um, that everybody should check out. And then kudos to Jordan for Porch Fest. I thought that was super, super fun and a great idea. That's it. Okay, I was going to hit Jordan. Thank you. It's, it was like maybe I should go on vacation more. So many great things happened this past week and weekend. Uh, <laughs> con <coughs> congratulations to the Asbury Park High School students with Pen is Mightier Than the Sword documentary. They won the best uh, prize at the Pocono Film Festival, best student film award. That's fantastic for Asbury Park High School and the city. Congratulations to the Bruno family, my, one of my best friends, if not my best, Jimmy Bruno, on the recognition of his father, this football stadium being named after him. Probably should have been done many years ago, but God bless Butch Bruno. Uh, congratulations to the Asbury Park Fishing Club for having their semi-annual party. And I had the porch fest, so Jordan, thank you. And I, I heard it was great. And I heard 3018 was the best one. <laughs> and that came from the owner, so the, the, that's all I have, thank you. Okay, we're on to item E, matters from the city manager. I have two items. Um, one, we have confirmation that the generator should be installed uh, next Monday, so we might have some intermittent power outages throughout the day, Just, but we should if there was a backup generator. Um, but this project has been much needed for many, many years. Um, but so far, surprisingly, there's been no real problems. Um, a few weeks ago, we completed our Darwin Park survey. Uh, the survey results demonstrated that the residents would use a dog park if we could find a place to use it, um, to build one, which right now we're looking for some funding. And the general amenities that they wanted was cleanliness, 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 that make it more clean and then more cleanliness on top of that. So it's an irrigation system, benches, garbage cans, um, but that's what they're looking for. So we're looking to try to find a space for it and some funding for it. That concludes it. We're on to item F, matters from the city attorney. I have no matters at this time. We will take a recess until the regular meeting begins at 7 p.m. Silent prayer, moment of reflection. We will now salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coaster, the Star Ledger on January 3rd, 2017, and posted on a bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. I will now read a statement, the municipal clerk statement regarding initiative petition. On October 10th, 2017, an initiative petition and proposed ordinance to amend and supplement Chapter 12, Section 8 of the Asbury Park Municipal Code relating to short-term rental regulations was received by my office. Pursuant to the initiative and referendum provision of the Faulkner Act, NJSA 40 colon 69A-184, by law within 20 days of the submission of an initiative petition, the municipal clerk shall determine whether the petition has been signed by the required number of qualified voters. 
and is otherwise sufficient pursuant to all relevant statutory requirements. Following the review performed by my office, we have determined that the initiative petition submitted satisfies the requirements set forth by law. Therefore, the petition and the proposed ordinance are herewith being forwarded to the mayor and council for their consideration. By law, the ordinance so submitted shall be deemed to have had a first reading and a provision shall be made for a public hearing. By letter, which was hand deli delivered today, we have provided notice to two representatives of the committee of petitioners that the petition has been approved and that a public hearing regarding the proposed ordinance has been scheduled for November 8, 2017 during the regular pump public portion of the council meeting of that date. If within 20 days from the date of my office certification of approval, which period shall be deemed to commence as of today's date, the governing body shall fail to pass the ordinance proposed by the petition in substantially the form requested. Then said ordinance shall be submitted to the voters at the general election to be held in November of 2018 in accordance with NJSA 40 colon 69A-192. This statement is intended to represent the municipal clerk certification of the result of our examination of the initiative petition pursuant to NJSA 40 colon 69A-187. We're on to the public portion of our meeting. Do I have a motion to open the meeting to the public? Move it. Second. All in favor? Okay, if you have the public, if you have any comments, please come to the mic. Please state your name for the record. And address. And your address. Nancy Sabino, 1000 4th Avenue. I wanted to bring to your attention that I was gonna attend the library board meeting this morning to uh, compliment them on their recent landscaping efforts, but the meeting was canceled. Last month's meeting was also canceled. I heard in both instances that it was because the director who leads the meetings and takes the minutes was not going to be attending. Looking on the city's website, I found the minutes of the last meeting that were listed were from January of 2017. While I believe that this board is not required the way most city boards are to have one meeting per month, the meetings that are listed are being canceled at will. More importantly, the meetings of the minutes that are being held are not posted on the city's website. Don't these have to be filed with the city? I'd like to know if there's a council person or a rep who is on the library board. Who can cancel a meeting? And does there need to be a reason? With nine people who make up the board, it seems that there should always be enough members to run a meeting. Is there any way to get more regularity out of this board that is supposed to be operating in support of the library and for the betterment of Asbury Park. Some good questions. And I don't have the answers right now, but I know I, I got a similar complaint. I talked to the president of the trustees, whatever, and the meeting for November is scheduled. So there will be a meeting in November. As far as the other questions, as far as, is there a council representative? No. Uh, is, do we have oversight in how they meet Michael I don't know legally uh, no that's governed by the Open Public Meetings Act and under law any meeting minutes are supposed to be provided to the city clerk um, for posting on the website there's a state law that says what needs to be posted early next year the city clerk is going to be doing um, a training for all boards and commissions so that they can be updated on this it was quite honestly gonna be this month but as you can see Cindy's not here um, she has some personal uh, issue to attend to. So we, we pushed it off till early next year. Um, herself and the city attorney will be giving it. We've asked all the boards and commissions to send two members um, so that everyone can be briefed on what um, the Open Public Meetings is and Open Public Records Act. Um, I'll reach out to the library director to get over to us the approved minutes so we can post them. I'll send them an email right now. Thank you. Thank you. Teresa Jones, former business owner, um, Hill Drive and Neptune. Um, in response to the previous uh, public member and the council, you can go to New Jersey Library Association. It's a website. There are regulations that govern libraries in the state of New Jersey and nationally. Just for your FYI. Thank you. Um, three points. 
You have handicapped spaces that are blocked by trees and signs. I brought this up in previous meetings. Uh, Cookman and Madison Avenue. People who are not disabled don't really recognize that. So that needs to be addressed. It's crazy. Someone's trying to get out of the car. You're in a handicapped spot. You got a pole, a, a utility pole. You got street signs and you got trees there. I'm just getting sick and tired of repeating it and saying it over and over and over. Uh, second point, there's parking business and cost. Uh, and then you got paid parking up to Mattis, uh, Main Street on Summerfield Avenue. I was over there the other day about to lose my teeth spitting. Uh, I don't think that when people do that for the money grab, you realize the impact. You got a school body there. You have a social service program. And I happen to be there watching folks trying to get into the food pantry. Those are the least able to be paying for parking and, and meter stuff. And I think that whole area there from, that, from uh, em Emory Street to Main Street needs to be eliminated. That's insane. You got parents who are least able to afford parking, got to run into the school 15 minutes, a half hour, hour. It's totally crazy. And, I, and the cost is totally outrageous. Everybody's not able to afford them. I have friends and family and associates that refuse to even come to Asbury Park now for that reason. The third thing I want to know, when Stone Pony has its events, there's regular police and Asbury Park Fire Department out there. Who's paying for that? Is it the city of Asbury Park that's paying time for Stone Pony or is it Stone Pony paying for the time? Because when we had our establishments, God forbid we should do that, that would be held against our license. Anybody have an answer to that? Yes. The third question, the Stone Ponies paying for them, the Johnny Max pays for them, anybody that has it under the restrictions under their liquor license are paying for them. So when there's police or fire at any establishment off hours, they're paying the going rate. Same as like if there's a street job being done in New Jersey, natural gas is hiring cops. Yes, the Stone Pony's paying for them. Porta pays for eight on the weekends. So I mean, it depends on whatever the police department puts into their license. Yes, they're paying for them. That's a racket. That's a what? That's a racket. How's it a racket? Because you're limited with police man hours. They're, you got 24 they're, hours. They're off-duty police. Yeah, but so at some point they gotta be working. They're working 35, 40 hours a week. So you would rather have us have no police there? Well, we would have it held against our license. We had to pay pay for, for lo, either security or somebody else. That was what was the going harassment in the 1990s and, and 2000s. They, they, all these establishments, Teresa, started off with, like you in the old days. I just want to be sure. With security, and the security didn't work. So the city said, guess what? We gave you a shot. You had security. Your security and it's not working. So now... Since you didn't play by the law and the rules, you're putting police officers there and you're paying $75 an hour to have them there. And yeah, because it's outrageous. We didn't carry on our, our establishments like that. The police and fire use in town now is totally crazy. That, was, that, that stuff is, was, is abominable. We didn't have that kind of carrying on and patrons peeing and pissing and doing all that kind of madness all over the place. This is going, has gone to Sodom and Gomorrah. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying this as somebody that's already been there. We couldn't carry on our establishments like that. Somebody needs to get that in, in check. You know, you know? Okay. Because it gives a view that some of us can't do stuff, but other folks can. I'm putting it out there like that, because that's what it is. The same way we couldn't get approval to get bistro tables, we had a restaurant in Broad Sea License where Brandles is. When I tell people that, they look at me like I'm insane. We couldn't sit tables out there for our restaurant stuff. So I, wa I wanna, you know, it looks like it's the, it is the tale of two cities. We need to get this stuff corrected. Thank you, Teresa. Hi, Pam Lambert in Sunset Avenue. I wanted to um, talk about the sign in Sunset Park. Uh, for over a year, I've been trying to get um, 
small uh, sentences, blurbs about uh, bicycle uh, laws in the city of Asbury Park up there when there's an opportunity. Just, you know, one sentence like, you know, under 17 has to wear a helmet or a cyclist ride on the right side of the, of the road. I just think it would be a great place to have a reminder for that kind of thing. Um, I was going through the communi communications director um, and she couldn't help me out. She said she was too busy. Um, so I don't know who to talk to to see if we can get that done. Um, and aside from that, um, I'm wondering if you would give consideration to put a second sign on the west side of the city someplace. I think it's a, the, the sign is a great communicator and awesome. keeps everybody up to date about what's going on. Um, I know the UEZ, we had talked about putting a second one. Of course, there's, that money is all gone, but maybe the city could come up with the twenty to $50,000 that it would cost to have a second sign put up on the west side someplace. Thank you. The second sign was proposed for the park because of lack of funds, it wasn't there. It's going to be looked at to be an add on to a future contract. So we acknowledge the fact that it's needed. Again, being the city on transitional aid, you know, Trenton would right now would say, no, you're not spending $50,000 on a sign. So again, we have to locate the money. And Michael, if you want something on the sign, just email me what you're looking for. It has to be obviously city specific. Um, but if there's some sort of language that you want, just send it to me. And, and if it's appropriate, we'll put it up. <coughs> okay. I think Thank Leisha you. works the sign, right? Not the communications. Yes. Person. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Le Leisha Floyd, I think, also is the person that takes care of the sign. Right. Yes. Okay. Sign Thank you. I will send sure. it. Thank you. It's okay. John Biondo, 704 7th Avenue. I want to call the council's attention and that of the city attorney to the New Jersey Supreme Court case entitled Red v. Bowman. The court in that case effectively ruled that once an initiative petition on a certain topic has been certified, the council should not confuse the voters by changing the law that the petition was intended to amend. If you vote to enact your proposed short-term rental ordinance, you will be directly contravening the very clear objective of the Faulkner Act. The Faulkner Act's objective is that voters be presented with a clear, understandable proposed ordinance that they may accept or reject as they see fit. I have overcome the burden of providing the signatures of a sufficient number of registered voters for your city clerk to certify my petition. Those registered voters base their signatures on the current existing law as it pertains to short-term rentals. If you were to attempt to change it now, the ordinance you have proposed would obviously be inconsistent with the current circumstances. Accordingly, the ordinance I propose might no longer be supported by all the citizens who backed it with their signatures, and it could not meaningfully, meaningfully be evaluated by the voters. Make no mistake, this is the case law in our state's highest court, and it prevents you from passing the law you propose. Therefore, I share with you my plan. First, I call on you to pass my ordinance on November 8th as it represents the will of the people on this issue. It also represents common sense regulation and preserves longstanding New Jersey tradition of week-long beach rentals. It supports our businesses, attracts new people to our city, and supplements the income of good people trying to make ends meet in an environment of burdensome rising taxes and unfair assessments. Second, if you decline to pass my ordinance, I call on you to withdraw your own proposed law pursuant to the Supreme Court case I just outlined. There is no urgency to change the law. To the contrary, despite myriad requests, you've still not provided any evidence of excessive noise, nuisance, or service calls as a result of short-term tenants. Further, I call on you to withdraw it because it would be morally repugnant to legislate in direct opposition to the will of the only people who felt strongly enough to gather signatures. I call on you to stop causing confusion, additional paperwork, new forms, discrimination, and favoritism. Your law is unconstitutional, it is ageist, it is classist, and it is racist. But most importantly, it's dumb. None of you ran on this platform, but all of you seem to be hiding behind it. I still have not heard anyone's opinion on it. You've barely spoken a word publicly, written no op-eds, claimed innocence, and provided no data to us ever, not once. Third, if you pass your ordinance, I will obtain the requisite 321 signatures I would need to force a veto through the Faulkner referendum process. Alternatively, I will seek a judicial injunction as your law violates both the 5th and 14th Amendments of the United States Constitution and the related provisions of the New Jersey Constitution. I have acted in good faith, and I don't believe you have. I'm asking you to change direction and listen to the people. Good evening, Council. Anita Weiner on Madison Avenue. And um, I'd like to talk about tangentially the parking. There are huge trucks delivering merchandise, a lot of alcohol, 
uh, on um, Banks Avenue. And um, as Gary had mentioned, they're too big for the side streets that they have to go down. And when there are four large trucks, even though Banks is a wide avenue, four large trucks here, here, there, there, it, it makes navigating the streets very difficult. So I'm wondering if an ordinance can be drawn up to delineate the size of delivery trucks brought into the downtown business district. And uh, if there can be some way for the owners of the bars and restaurants, because the Coke truck, I'm sure, delivers to more than one restaurant in the area, and that's probably why they send a ginormous uh, truck. But if there could be some way while you're planning the parking to figure out how to reduce the size and number of trucks that are coming into the downtown area on Emory, which are smaller streets, Cookman, you know, so um, that's something I'm hoping you can think of. Um, what I wanted to also ask is, Main Street is looking much better. The buildings are being rehabbed, new buildings are being put in, with one exception, and that's the YMCA on 71. It looks like it's about to just crumble and fall down. And I'd like to know if you have an update on any progress that may have been made via code or talking to the owners of the building, because I think it's a really unsightly entry into Asbury Park. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> it's very difficult um, to restrict the orderly flow of traffic. Um, I'm pulling it up right now. It's part of what a lot of people commonly call it is the, it's the national truck network. Um, we have very little jurisdiction in point to point um, from leaving a terminal where they are to terminus of a delivery. Um, the rule is in New Jersey 102 inches wide, which is eight and a half feet, nine and a half feet, eight and a half feet. Um, and in order to do it, you have to demonstrate safety issues. Um, there has to be a lot of accidents. There has to be a lot of vehicle accidents, pedestrian accidents. Um, in the areas where you're talking, because we've, we've been looking at this internally, we don't have <coughs> even the beginning of the level of accidents to start that process. It needs to be certified by a uh, municipal engineer. Um, it's, it's very difficult because of where people terminate. It's very difficult to, to do the interstate commerce side of it. Um, another aspect that no one has caught up with, quite honestly, is GPS is that a lot of cars and trucks are going in ways that don't make sense because drivers are just following GPS. Um, I had this a lot in my last town where people were tearing down power lines. So until we can get all those things settled, it's very, very <coughs> difficult. And it would cost us tens of thousands of dollars in the studies to get to restrict them. Um, I just emailed Deputy Chief Kelso to you know, reiterate to the department, make sure that there's the orderly flow of traffic, mm -hmm. that you don't have the bundling of trucks. Um, we can enforce that better. You know, I'm instructing Kelso to look at it, and we'll go from there. But to stop the deliveries, impossible. No, I wasn't talking about just stopping; it's just the size of the trucks. Uh, the size of the trucks regulated by state, state and federal. State, state and federal. Okay, yes. Because I know in Portland, Oregon, they have arranged a way for smaller trucks to make those kinds of deliveries in neighborhoods uh, where there are businesses. So I didn't know if that was in New Jersey. In New Jersey there's been Jersey. litigation. Why not? Okay, <laughs> and the information on the YMCA? I think oh, we code emailed code. about it. I, I, didn't we email a little bit that the YMCA has been cited? I know, I'll follow up on it, but I'm 93% I'm sure citations have gone out. Yes. Okay, so if something gets ci cited, how many times can you, can you just keep paying citations and you don't have to take any action to remediate what you're being cited for? I think there's an adjudication process in our municipal court. So either you settle and pay it or... So are we going through any of those processes? I'd have to check. What, what will happen is, dealing with code enforcement, the, the goal is to get compliance and not the summons. So there will be a violation issue noticed for some, in, for some issues like this, there was a violation. Um, and then there's a summons. And we try to get them to fix it. So what happens a lot of times is we'll say, We'll go to the court and say you have 30 days to fix it. We'll hold the summons in abatement, in abeyance, 
and then they don't do it and we have to start the process over again because we want the compliance. So with, with that building, I think they're in the second phase of it, if I remember correctly, of comply. Um, but there's been some ownership issues there, I believe, also. So code has been on it. It just, it just sure takes it time. Has. I just, uh, I'm not saying anything bad about code. I'm just saying, you know, is anything result oriented? So I appreciate your answer and thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Merman Ruffin. I live on Second Avenue. I'm up here. I want to know about the um, job sites that's going on around here. If y'all can have any information or give me any information how to get on one of the job sites, I'm a resident of the community. Who can he visit? To, uh, can you meet somebody at City Hall tomorrow? Yes, I can. If you come into City Hall, go to the administration. Okay. We actually have on the first, the desk where when you first walk in, there's applications from various places um, that are hiring, or at least just the applications. I don't know if they're hiring. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, yeah, I say that because I done filled out applications on the beach, the Boston Way, and this little trail over here, and I have nothing back. Um, and it's been a while. Okay. Well, um, we'll make a call tomorrow and see where they are with some of the hiring processes. All right, thank you. So, Sir, what could time should he come, Mike? Well, if he's already filled out the applications, um, it'll take us a little bit of time to find out where he is with everything. Sir, could you repeat your name for the record, please? Merman Ruffin. <clears throat> Maybe leave Michael your cell phone number or your uh, email. Right, right, because Boston Way right now hasn't hired anybody because all they're doing is demolition. So it's, it, once they're done with the demolition, Michael's group, I'm not sure where they're at, but you went to the right three places, so we can follow up on your application. Yeah, leave your phone number. With Michael. Oh, hi, I'm Brett Lowell, uh, 1107 Bridge Street. It's my first city council meeting I've attended. Uh, I want to talk about the short term uh, rental ordinances that are going around. Um, I share with City Council uh, their concerns about maintaining the socioeconomic diversity of the town. I also share with the homeowners concerns about how I'm able to use my property. And I know there's a lot of controversy on both sides on how the implications of both laws would actually play out in the real world, and I don't know the answer to those. Um, one thing I do know is that the current laws that are on the books works for no one, I mean, which is the reason everybody wants them changed. Um, in, uh, in July of last summer, the city council, I uh, wasn't there obviously, um, said that they were gonna take their time and come up with a um, correctly refined ordinance that would work, and I appreciate the council's time in doing that. Um, that was 15 months ago, and um, the, uh, the problem is is that um, if, this, if this current law, we're sort of in a period of limbo. So we're stuck with a, a law that doesn't work for anyone. And if the current law is postponed to be voted on a year from now, it's gonna be another year and a half. And it's making it very difficult to provide clarity to homeowners on how we can use our, our homes. And does the city really have to enforce aspects of that old law that don't work? I mean, it's going to be changed, so why are we enforcing what's going to be changed that's going to be legal under both? I'm a owner-occupied two families, so right now I can't get a seasonal CO, although under both current planned ordinances, I will be able to. So the worst case scenario right now is to keep the current law for me. So, um, so uh, that's, I guess, my question is, is there any clarity or what are we supposed to do? In this period of limbo situation. At, at this time, I wouldn't answer any questions as you heard previously, we're gonna be sued. So I wouldn't say anything at this time to you. Well, I, I can certainly interject to the effect that right now, um, the city has a, a summer rental license procedure, which hasn't been repealed. So um, that still remains in effect. Um, depending upon what actions are taken by the council as we move forward, um, that ordinance may be repealed, um, but um, that will depend on what 
transpires. Because the two family, uh, two family owner occupied is specifically singled out in the current law as not being eligible for a summer CO. For I summer, wouldn't say it's specifically summer. singled out. I think what happened is they ju the, that ordinance just says single family house. So no, so multi dwelling, mother daughter, all of those are out. It's just single family house. That's my recollection. But Jesus, I haven't, I haven't read it in the last. And few years. the current ordinance that the council has introduced would allow right. renting out uh, through the short term rental process the additional unit in a two-family dwelling where the, the owner occupies the other unit. Yeah, bo both current uh, mm -hmm. proposed plans would do that, so. So we'll have more clarity after November 8th. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, uh, Deputy Mayor, and City Council members. Diane Shelton, resident, 1201 Springwood Avenue. But this evening, I'm here representing Prevention Coalition of Monmouth County and and to introduce one of our youth members. Hello, everybody. Uh, all right, I'm here. I'm Promise Robinson, and I live in Neptune, but I'm here representing Youth Time to Shine, a committee of Prevention Coalition of Monmouth County, as well as interfaith neighbors, students from Hula Cafe who participated in our recent thing, which was the photo vision. Um, contest. As a young leader, we were asked to tell a story about our environment, our school, our neighborhood, and our communities to include areas we also felt needed attention. We told our story through photos, as you can see over here to our right. We took photos of areas that we felt were both negative and positive throughout greater parts of Asbury. Regardless of any negative negativity, we wanted to focus on the positive aspects of our great community. So this week is Red Ribbon Week, and basically what Red, Red Ribbon Week is, it's an, it's an alcohol, tobacco, and other drug and violence prevention awareness campaign observed annually in October in the United States. The observance began on this past Monday and will end on Friday. We were we are taking this opportunity to present the city council, the city of Asbury Park, our photo, our photo vision poster in recognition of Red Ribbon Week. A quote from Sarah Kane says, "There's not a drug on earth that can make life meaningful." As a member of Youth Time to Shine and young resident, I want to remain above the influence. Great job. Yes. We're going to do a quick Good evening, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, and Council. My name is Sanja Mack. <clears throat> Could you hear me? My name is Sanja Mack. 
I'm a, a lifetime resident of Asbury Park. Um, I've been going to the city uh, over probably eight years to get a job. I work all over. I got CNA license, I got CDL license, I work in Newark, I work all over. All I'm trying to do is come work in the town that I live in so I don't have to commute all over the place. I got custody of four of my grandkids. And like I said, I'm a lifetime resident here. And like the go to like last week putting the twentieth application in for CDL driver and I've already been down there driving before and like it's just to me, I'm just like I'm just running into a brick wall just trying to work somewhere where I live at and I feel comfortable where I can be at. And that's all I really gotta say. If I'm not mistaken, didn't you work for the city this this past year? No, I worked last year. I was driving trucks for uh the department of trucks. Thank you, so much. She applied. Okay. And you put it in your application, correct? 20th application. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Oh, thank you. Alicia Simmons. Thank you so much. And great job. Yep, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Felicia Simmons, Asbury Park, Sewell Avenue. Hello, good evening. Um, I'm here for just plainly to state um, a couple questions, a couple of statements. Is that um, I'm from Asbury. I would like to stay in Asbury, and Asbury has always been a 12-month city, and uh, hopefully we're headed towards a fully merged and um, workable city for everybody in it. Um, and saying that. I'm also saying that um, I took it upon myself um, in numerous things, because anyone knows me, I knows I'm a little bossy, um, to go in to speak to Stephen from the Michaels Group. And speaking with Stephen and conversating mainly about employment, because I know employment is important to um, the heart and minorities and low-income people in the city. And we worked out a deal. I'm not getting anything for it where I will scan and, um, scan and go through the applicants for the Michaels Group Development. I'm taking it upon myself to do it because I feel my city needs it. And they need someone there to know that they're able to work and they're able to get on the work site and at least get a foot forward. Um, doing that, um, I'm gonna say thank you to the Michaels Group for understanding that there is a need for a community person that understands the community to help with the community. Um, saying that, and thank you to the mayor for um, private conversation and help, and anyone else who would like to help, because in this scanning, I wanna make sure that we give quality, ready people for the work site. Um, he said to me, Stephen from the Michaels Group, um, he's made allowances for people in the past from the city, and I said there's no need for allowances. Um, people who will show up will show up ready to work and prepared to work. Um, knowing, being from the city, I know there's many, many hundreds of people who are excited about the work opportunity and the millions of dollars that are going to pour through the city in construction. That will be a lifeline to the heart of Asbury and that will give them a path to stay in the new Asbury that's transforming um, at this time. So in all needs, if anyone knows, anyone who wants to apply, they will literally receive an application from the Michaels Group and a photocopy f of my business card to contact me um, about employment. So that's it. Thank you, and Mr. Ruffin, yes. talk to her. I was just about to say. <laughs> Grab her. Hi, Brita Morano, Eighth Avenue. Uh, I think Michael knows what I'm going to talk about tonight. Uh, I put in an OPA request on, I don't know if you call it a sign, a banner, or a logo that's on our telephone pole on, on Highway 71, Main Street. And the first time I got no response, there was nothing on it. Then Michael at the last meeting said, oh no, I have all the information I could send it to you. Well. I made a copy for each one of you up there. This is what I got. And the first page says the underside writers, and that's Michael 
and Cindy, I don't think it's their place to apply for a sign on an electric pole for a business or an organization or anybody. That was the first thing. Then the second thing on here is a quote from an insurance policy, for an insurance policy, which they don't have. First of all, Highway 71 is a state highway. You have to get approval from the state of New Jersey to put anything up on the electric pole, especially on Main Street. The second thing, there's all kinds of things you have to do from the electric company. By the way, Michael, they moved out of this location six months ago. I don't think he knew that. Uh, the, the, the Jersey Central Power and Light, they, there's no permit or proposal, no dates. There's no dates on any of the correspondence. You'll see this for yourself. I think it's really tragic when a city manager sends out a piece of paper like this to taxpayers in this city. They have no authority to give permission, either him or Cindy, to put anything on a telephone pole, uh, electric pole. And the other thing is where it's located and a few pictures in here. I don't even think it's the same light bulb, but anyway. I wanna know why I got this package with nothing in it, wrong address for Jersey Central, because they left six months ago from Newman Springs Road. And a quote, instead of an insurance, uh, I, I guess it'd be a policy, for the poll. No dates, says temporary in here. What's temporary? I mean, like that, you start something like this in mushrooms into something very big. So you have to nip this in the bud and get it over with. This is wrong. This is, I don't know if it's illegal, but it sounds like it is, because there's nothing in here to, to tell a taxpayer that somebody can put something on a poll and get away with it. It's been up there for six weeks now since uh, July 30th, I guess, was the date. Now, I'd like to know why I got this piece of paper. And most of all, I want the council to know, because the city manager is the guy setting the rules around here. And if they're false, what is that telling you? You're gonna review him in about a month, I think. And I think you should really look at this piece of paper. This is what you get. And if I get it, you're gonna get something too. So, is there an answer? You want an answer? I, I can't answer because I don't know what you're holding. <laughs> it's, uh, she, it's the gay flag on me. No, no, but she's saying a piece of paper. I haven't seen oh. a piece of paper. Sheet one, certificate of liability insurance. That means it's a liability insurance certificate and not a quote. She it says it in the first paragraph, it's not a legal thing. It's not legal, it's a quote. This is to certify that the policies of insurance listed below have been issued to the insured name above. That's not a quote. That means there's an insurance policy issue. It's sitting right here. It says certificate of liability insurance. Sheet I three, let me finish. Started. Let me finish. Sheet three, letter of indemnification, identifies the city from Garden State Equality for any damage that's there. So yes, I'm protecting the city. It's a quote. It's not a read, quote, read read it. It. it's just insurance. Banner installation flagpole number. There's the flagpole number with the corrected pole on it because I go out and look at it. The pictures of where it was, where JCPNL likes these things to be installed. And I, as I told you last meeting, we've been talking with JCPNL. JCPNL stated to me today that the only thing that's missing now is the dates that the flag needs to be up. So Mike Manzella is talking to Garden State Equality. He reached out to them today for a window of when they want the flag to be installed. As I told you at the last meeting, there is nothing being done wrong. There is nothing being illegal. I take offense, as you told me this on the phone, as I take offense to you refer to those people don't deserve flags. It is disgusting how you talk to me about this. This is done above board, 100% legal, and I'm incredibly frustrated from listening to your homophobic and racist terms with this. This is done 100% right, the certificate of liability insurance and indemnification have been provided. Our standard has been met. Good. That's why I made the copy so everybody could see. The council has already been provided them, to them. The council was provided to them while you were talking at the last meeting. I was giving them to Cindy. I know you're wrong. 
You don't have the authority. Rita, your time's up. I know, but he doesn't have the authority. No, okay, but your time's up. <laughs> Thank you, Rita. Okay. That's why I made them. Yes, ma'am. Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Natalie Harris. Um, I'm just wondering about the jobs like some of the people were down here. Um, I do the crossing guard for the city in the morning time. I'm just trying to get full-time employment. I'm doing part-time now, and I don't get any benefits or anything like that. So I'm just looking for something you know, more hours and, you know, more stuff included in it, health benefits and stuff like that. Yeah. Have you filled out applications? Yes. Okay. With the city and with, with the city and yes. with everybody else? Okay. Yes. Are we hiring right now? With the city has put out application for three <coughs> truck drivers. We put it in the budget, but we couldn't post it until we adopted the budget and being on transitional aid. We didn't adopt the budget to August, so that's why the jobs are being posted now. Uh, I filled out for the maintenance, I believe, for the municipal okay. building. The phone number that you provided when the DPW superintendent went to call you, it didn't work. So we were trying to find a way to find you because those emails came in this morning. So leave me your phone number and we'll, someone will give you a call back because okay. we were looking to call you. Okay. All right, thank you. 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 Hi, Ryan Kutu, 704 7th Avenue. Uh, I have three main points. I think that's as far as I'll get. Uh, the first one, I just want to give a shout out to um, people that worked with me this week. Over the past few months, there's been a major neglect of uh, street sweeping on the 1000 and 1100 block of Asbury Avenue. I was emailing with Michael, uh, the superintendent, the director of public works, um, Rob Mancini, and um, it was, I don't know if it was a collaborative, collaborative effort or who made it happen, but it, it appears that now the street is now being swept regularly, so thank you for whoever um, is doing that. Hopefully we can continue it. Uh, second, I would like to express my opinion that I think the, the city council should pass the petition that's been presented through the Faulkner Act for short-term rentals. I think it provides very sensible regulation as well as simultaneously providing um, homeowners with, with property rights uh, to use their property how they wish over many classes and not just a select few. And lastly, I'd just like to ask um, if there's been any discussion or intention to withdraw or postpone the city's scheduled vote for the city's proposed ordinance on November 8th that was previously scheduled, or is it the intent that now the city's proposed ordinance as well as this one that was invoked by the petition, will they both be voted on, or is, or is the city's going to be postponed? Has there been any discussion on that and any decisions? I don't no, think we've made any. No discussion. It was just certified. No today. discussion or no decision? I'm sorry. No discussion. Two discussion. No discussion. It was, we could have waited four days and certified it after today's meeting. Okay. And then you would have said, oh, they did it on purpose. So it was sent out. So no, no, no. There's, there's, no, there's no bad intentions here. I just want transparency and to no know what the city's right. intentions are. We, we, we haven't met. There's been no discussion. Uh, do you plan to announce any decision about whether both will be voted on or just one at next meetings before the release of the agenda? Or just we'll just find out the night of the meeting? The agenda comes out Friday. I understand. So it'll be on the agenda Friday, which, which one is being voted on, one or both? or. Okay. Right now they're both scheduled for November 8th. Correct. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, on behalf of the Porch Fest folks, just wanted to say a thank you to the council and thank you to the support. Um, we ended up, um, by estimates of 1,500 people showed up, which is just amazing. Um, and um, once we have strong armed the um, people, the restaurants that put ads in, um, we'll looks like we'll have collected net over six thousand dollars for Asbury Park Greening and Hurricane Relief in Puerto Rico. So oh. just, um, 
and we actually sold out of t-shirts almost. The remaining ones are at Shelter Home, and uh, we've had a lot of people come up and say, Asbury Park's a lot skinnier than we thought. We have a lot of extra larges, so we sold out of all the mediums and smalls, so we're going to order some more and probably put them in Shelter Home or, fun or uh, whatever the other one they have in, our, in the arcade is. Can I have your name for the record, sir? Huh? Could you? Jordan Modell. I'm oh, so sorry, Jordan Modell. Um, Jordan, thank you again. Hello, Mayor and Council, Jerry Scrum of Long Branch. Um, I want to bring up something that I noticed riding around when I was looking at houses. We still need house numbers on many houses. That I don't know how that can go on. For four years, I've been asking about it, and it's still house numbers are missing. I don't know how you go on inspecting one building for a CO for a title transfer and not notice the houses next door and not having house numbers. They can't have blinders to inspectors. They need to look up and down the street. Then, um, once again, it seems people need, find it necessary to walk in the street, carrying groceries or walking. Bikes are on the sidewalk. Bikes are on the wrong side of the road, as Pam had brought up. And I always find it seems like strangers come to town. They know how to follow the rules, but it, it, in the middle of the week, Nobody's following the rules. Now, um, an idea for free parking for Cookman Avenue. What about midday free parking for shoppers? Because we know people will pay to park to come and eat on any evening in town instead of having a Wednesday or Friday day all day where someone will just leave their car there all day. How about just in the middle of the day from 11 o'clock to 4 o'clock free parking during the Christmas holidays or the holiday shopping to get people to come and spend hours shopping in the city. Okay, now, years ago when I first came here, everybody's battle cry, they moved to Asbury Park for diversity. And that was the big thing, we like diversity. Well, if you go on the internet and you check out Airbnb, you'll find out that people have turned basements into bedrooms for the family to live in so they could rent out bedrooms, lived in attics, um, Neighbors complaining that they don't know who their neighbors are with people coming and going. But the main thing is you're taking affordable rental units off the market to create Airbnb. And you really got to weigh that in, and that should be what we're talking about. You're saving the diversity of the city by putting these rules in. And then the other thing is I didn't see in the ordinance, what about people who have back houses that were really apartments? They rent them out as Airbnb. I thought you can only rent an Airbnb the room is when it's your primary residence. And who ever heard of turning a two family into a one family? A, a house with two bedrooms on each floor making telling on the internet they have six or seven bedrooms. Um, I think you're tr you have a tough road ahead of you, but um, Airbnb, is, if you go on the internet, there's a lot of people who are not happy with it in the cities where it's, it's happening. And I looked it up, you know, I've been looking at it for the last couple of days, so I'd be prepared to talk to you about this. But if, if everybody wants diversity, um, you're not having it with Airbnb. Thank you. Thank you. So, Jerry, we did that with the parking last year, and we worked with the merchants and the chamber. So we're doing that again this year, where we do a block of hours during the day, one day a week, to try to... In usually a Saturday or Sunday to encourage people to come here and park for free and shop. Well, why not just the whole week? That way everybody you know they can Well, we do it from Thanksgiving to January 1. Okay. Thanks. One day, I mean, one day a week, but we do it one day a week the entire no. holiday season. No, but why not every day during the holiday season, just four hours a day? I'm, I'm, I'm going to venture a guess, and, and I'm going to... No, I'm just saying it's I'm an idea to get more people in money. the store. Yeah, she's she's going to be right. <laughs> okay, thanks, guys, for listening. No. One day we hope to do that. Hi, Louise Murray, 1604 Grand Avenue, Asbury Park, former councilwoman, uh, resident all my life in New Jersey, in Asbury Park. Um, Michael, uh, I think we can refrain from name calling because I really have to say this. Rita is not homophobic by no stretch of the imagination. Neither am I. Bottom line is, it just happens to be a gay symbol, flag, or whatever. If it was the VFW, if it was whatever other flag, 
All she wants to know it were the procedures followed accordingly to the rules and regulations of putting up a damn flag or local or whatever. I, for one, think it's an advertisement. That's how I feel. And I think he's getting free advertisement because it's smack, smack dab right in front of his address, 1408. And I used to walk that street, go over to Frank's Deli, who happens to be a relative of mine, and it was in his window. Now it's on a pole. So if I had a business and I had a specific logo, I wanted to put it on a lamppost. Well, but it's not Garden do? State Equality specific logo, right? Garden State Equality is a nonprofit, right, that that works to get gay the LGBTQ that community was rights. In his window. This is a gay flag. A nat it, it, a gay flag is not specifically advertising for Garden State Equality. I mean, that's where you're losing me when when you when it, you're saying but, if, You know what, Amy? I would agree with you if it wasn't in his window for the longest time. It was in his window as Garden State. I don't even know what it is. I have to apologize to anybody in this room that does it's know it, and I don't. It's okay. a non-profit, Okay, well, I don't know anything about it. All I know is it was Garden State Equality, because like I say, Frank Stelly, I go in there. They're my relatives, all right? Bottom line is I used to see it in the window. Then I see it from the window on the pole. That's all I'm saying. So my, my, I feel it's an advertisement. It's a logo. So in my mind, you know, why, why should it, and, and it happens to be in front of his address. I mean, it's just so, you know, it just seems so convenient and whatever, but the name calling's gotta stop. I mean, if you can't, you know, that, that was a little out of line, a little out of line. I'm sorry? Yeah, I mean, no. Homophobic. Right, no, but I have a gay. Homophobic. How many houses in town have gay flags in front of them? Do you think those are advertisements too? No, that's private property. We welcome that. Okay. Are you serious? Okay, just my I'm, grandkids. I'm they clarifying they this the advertisement kid. argument. I'm sorry. That's all. That's all. Okay, done. Sorry. Sorry. Motion closed. Move it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. We're on to item F. We're on to minutes. I have the executive session minutes of October 11th, the work session minutes of October 11th, and the regular meeting minutes of October 11th. Do I have a motion to approve? Move it. Second. Move it. Councilman Clayton? Yes. Councilman Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Mayor Moore? Yes. Okay, we're on to item G, consent agenda resolutions. All matters listed on the consent agenda are presented collectively to the City Council and will be considered for approval with one vote. These matters are to be considered routine in nature. There will be no individual discussion of these items. If a discussion is discuss desired by one or more Council members as to any particular item, then said item shall be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. We have 2017-314, resolution approving special events. 2017-315, resolution to cancel unclaimed credits on taxes. Resolution 2017-316, resolution to terminate sewer account billing block 4306, lot 7, 209 7th Avenue. 2017-317, resolution to terminate sewer account billing block 302, lot 10, 909 3rd Avenue. 2017-318, a resolution rescinding liquor license 13033008010 Asbury 1 liquor license LLC for the 2017-2018 liquor license renewal 2017-319 a resolution rescinding liquor license 1303320380006 Ohana Kitchen Company for the 2017 2018 liquor license renewal. 2017-320, a resolution approving disposition of surplus property. 2017-321, a resolution approving disposition of surplus property vehicles. Do I have a motion to approve? Move it. Second. 
Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Mayor Moore? Yes. Okay, we're on to individual resolutions. We're on to in resolution 2017 322, a resolution approving the payment of bills with the removal of purchase order 1703409. A motion to approve? Move it. <clears throat> Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Mayor Moore? No. Okay, resolution it doesn't 20. Pass. Yeah. Well then. Wait, oh, wait, paper. The bills. What, what, can we table it? Yes. There you go. Move it. <laughs> resolution 2017 323. A resolution entering into an agreement with Monmouth County to administer the city's community block grants. The bill a motion to approve. Bills and claims. Hold on. Yes. We need to get this first. Deputy oh, Mayor. No, I was yeah. kidding. It was you stepped just... out. You came in and voted. Right. It was the bill list. It was the Can bill list. Can you please confirm that you are voting in the affirmative to approve the bill list? Yes, I'm voting to approve the bill list. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Resolution 2017-323, a resolution entering into an agreement with Monmouth County to administer the city's community block grant program. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-324, a resolution authorizing design services project management and construction and inspection services to T&M Associates for improvements to sanitary sewer line under the railroad tracks on Springwood Avenue, change order number one. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-325, a resolution of the mayor and the city council of the city of Asbury Park determining that the development of an affordable housing at 522 Prospect Avenue, Block 1605, Lot 15-02, will address an existing housing need in the city of Asbury Park for home financing. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-326, a resolution of the Mayor and Council of the City of Asbury Park, acting as a redevelopment entity, extending an agreement regarding the use of certain parking spaces, walkways, and boardwalk areas with Madison Asbury Retail LLC for construction staging areas for the construction work on the Fifth Avenue Pavilion on Block 4502, Lot 1.16. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 327, a resolution authorizing change orders with Black Rock Enterprises for the road program. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yep. Mayor Moore? Yes. on to public hearings. Do I have a motion to open the public hearing for ordinance 2017-38, adopting an amendment to the scattered sites redevelopment plan? Okay. A motion to open? Yeah, we, open the public hearing. We pulled, we pulled that. that. We pulled that. Um, yeah. Move it. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Councilmember Pam, Pam Lamberton. Yes. Right. Um, Pam, could you just give me a moment? Yeah. I'd like to just explain what this ordinance sure. is. This ordinance would amend the scattered site redevelopment plan in order to allow the triangular shaped parcel of property, which is located immediately across from the Boys and Girls Club, to be utilized for surface parking lot. Right now, the only permissible uses for that parcel under the scattered site plan would be for residential. We were approached by the Boys and Girls Club with a request. They would like to develop a parking lot on that area. It's a very small triangular uh, shaped parcel. 
And in order to allow that, we have to go through an amendment process to the redevelopment plan. The ordinance was introduced. It was referred to the planning board. The planning board recommended its adoption back to the council, and it's now scheduled for public hearing this evening. So that's the ordinance that is subject to this public hearing. Thanks. Pam Lambert in Sunset Avenue. Um, the council prior to you and for about 10 years um, gave away a lot of city property. Every time there was a vacation of a street or a lot or whatever, they would give it away. Um, this, I think this could be the first p plot that has come before you for this, this kind of disposal. Um, I'm assuming you are. You would give it to the Boys and Girls this is Club not owned or by sell the, it for this is, not, this is not I'm owned sorry. by the city. They already own it. We do not. So own they're just looking for the zoning change. They're just looking for associated yeah. with that parcel. It's not a city-owned parcel. Okay. Erase what I just said. Then I'll <sighs> jump to the second part, which is um, there have been a lot of lost opportunities in the city for pocket parks, um, a place to put your dog park, maybe rather than turning it into another paved area in the city, there's better use for that piece of property. But now that I know that they own it, <laughs> that may all erase also. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, Christian Hubert, 401 First Avenue. Uh, I grew up coming to Asbury Park to swim at that pool, Boys and Girls Club uh, for CBA. I came here for two years, my freshman, sophomore year. And we left to go to the Atlanta Club because we couldn't get parking there. Um, cars broken into, it was terrible. So that's my first experience in this town. There's parking over in that area. Schools are going to come back over here, have that zone pool, brings people into the town. Uh, I think that'd be a great idea. Thank you. Jerry Scrano, twice agreeing with Pam tonight. Um, <laughs> the thing is, changing it from residential to pay parking, are you gonna put a restriction that they should have some greening there, you know, some real trees, and maybe they should have a retention so the water from that parking lot stays on that property instead of going back into the street. Maybe that could be one of the requirements. Okay. So it's um, environmentally helpful for that neighborhood. That's all, thank you. Thank you. Does it have to go to the planning board? It already went to the planning board. Oh, it did? Yeah. For a recommendation on the and amendment to the scattered site redevelopment yeah. plan. They, okay, and they put in swales? Right. They put it at the planning board level, they took care of what you're asking for. Um, mine is um, two part. Um, first is what president does it show that we go in and amend a scattered site and how would that affect us in the future planning um, or scattered site development. Um, sitting here for years, um, I've heard this scattered site um, plan. Um, previous to you, um, repeated people come in saying amendments, 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 um, and it's fell on deaf ears. Um, I'm not necessarily for or against it. I'm for a clear plan for the future. And second, um, I'm always against whenever you take something zone away for residential um, because that's somebody that's going to lose their home or could have a home in the future. And um, a parking lot will never be shelter. Um, I know there is a need on the street, maybe a rezoning because it's a double way street and it's very cluttered in that street. And it's slightly s tilted. Um, in that area. So um, I don't know how many cars they could fit there in the first place. So I'm always hesitant about taking away a home for something that I don't see is going to be a well planned. I know they're developing a lot of land in the future in that area. So maybe um, in this, a better plan for parking. Um, that's it. Hey, thank you. And I can just indicate that all requests for amendments to any redevelopment plans in the city are viewed on a case-by-case -case basis. This particular request was reviewed by staff and the Director of Planning and Redevelopment recommended the uh, request to the Council and it has also been recommended by the Planning Board. I would say go ahead and approve it. That particular location, the housing that was there, was built many decades ago, undersized, doesn't even meet the requirements today. It's going to be, a, it's not, it, you might be able to get four or five cars in there. And because it's so close and adjacent to the housing authority, and I, you just barely get that 12 foot require or 11 foot requirement for access parking spaces. Thank you. Close it. We agree with you. <laughs> Motion to close 2017 38. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to adopt 2017 38. Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. 
Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Motion to open the meeting to the public for Ordinance 2017-39, an ordinance establishing salaries of certain employees within the city of Asbury Park, Monmouth County, New Jersey. Motion? Move it. Second. Second. All in favor? Okay. Motion to close. Move it. Second. All in favor? A motion to adopt 2017-39. Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Motion to adjourn? Yes. All in favor? Yes.